Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing part three of this Italian Greyhound and we are working on the um, second ear. We uh, finished this one ear in an hour so I'm hoping this ear is going to take a similar um, amount of time. This side of the, of the um, ear is a bit darker so it may take a bit longer um, but we're just going to do similar techniques to how we completed this ear um, and then we'll add some of the fur just to help connect it. Um, but this piece is coming along together nicely. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. It does help me out a lot. Um, all the links can be found down below um, to part one and part two, as well as the Facebook group where you can find the reference photo and the line art if you want to follow along. Okay, um, I think we're ready to get started. Okay, so I've just zoomed you in a bit. And we are going to start with um, the triangle shape part of this ear again. Um, I'm just going to lighten my graphite lines. They're a bit too dark at this side. So I'm using my putty eraser just to do this. Just to help lighten these guidelines. Um, and then as before, I'm going in with my warm grey one as a base layer. And I'm just going to follow the shape of this little triangle that's creating this edge of this um, ear. Now I haven't drawn in this guideline so I'm just going to ever so slightly just follow this curve of the ear and that'll help you get that shape of this triangle or curved kind of triangle that it's got going on and then I'm just going to smooth out the two for this paper. I hope you're all keeping really warm. It's so cold here today. Um, it was um, about one degrees earlier when I took um, my dog out for a walk. And I am still quite cold. I'm, I've got blankets on, <laughs> trying to keep warm. Okay, so we've got a nice base layer down now just to help smooth out the two for this paper. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in all the colours I can see coming through this coat. So the brown tones. Um, and then we'll go over the top of those brown tones with the, um, the greys again. So I'm starting with um, Nougat. Nougat. Um, and I'm just doing it along the edge of this ear. Medium pressure, and I'm following the fur direction again. So after your base layer, everything sort of comes down to following this um, fur direction. And I'm just going to bring this along this ear. And then just gently along here as well. I'm going to take my um, burnt umber. And again, I'm just going to add in a fairly light layer of this burnt umber. And these brownish tones are just going to shine through nicely underneath the um, grey tones. Um, I'm going to just have a bit of a burnt umber here. I'm coming down here. Now I'm just going back to that nugget um, and adding it a bit more along the base of this ear fold here. Again, I'm going over the top of that um, uh, burnt umber. By going over the top, it's just going to help blend these two colours together nicely. I'm just going to cover this bit. Very light pressure. I'm not pressing hard with this nugget. And I'm just going to blend this down. Um, and then I've got my walnut brown. And I'm just going to use the walnut brown 
in this corner which is going to be quite dark in the end and again I'm blending over that burnt umber okay now we're going to go in with the greys so I'm going to start with one grey free and I'm going to start from the corner here and bring this on this part of the ear so on this tip of this ear it's lighter in tone um, it's not warm grey one light but it is a lighter highlight compared to the rest of the ear so the warm grey three is going to act as like our highlight colour sorry about the shadow from my hand it's, um, I hope it's not too distracting So I've done the warm grey free across here. Now we may end up having to darken this ever so slightly, but we'll see once we start adding the um, colours in the ear. Um, I'm then going to take my warm grey five. Um, and I'm taking this down the edge of this ear now. And I'm going over the top of all these brown tones. And you'll just see that those brown tones will just give a nice brownish tinge to this grey and add some life to these ears nice colour to these ears and then I'm just going to bring it along here as well This I'm going to have to put this one into a, a pencil extender soon Okay, so this is one grey five and I'm just going to do it in this corner here as well. So you can see just how now that we've started adding in this warm grey five we're getting a nice dark grey but you can see those brown tones really shining through now um, i'm going to take the cold grey five next and i'm going to use the cold grey five in uh this section here where i can just see some blue tones so i'm just going to take the warm grey five again following that fur direction now i'm not focusing too much again on details these ears are out of focus this part of the ears are out of focus, it's further back from the camera. So we're just focusing on the tonal values. We want things to look dark, we want we want the shadows to be dark, the highlights to be light, um, and then um, the areas in front are going to be more in focus. This is cold grey five. And then I'm just going to fill in that little gap with the warm grey five because it's more warmer here. So I'm just looking at the tonal values. Do they have a more of a like a yellowish tone to them or do they have that blue tone? And that's how I determine whether I'm using a warm or a cold colour. Um, and then I'm going to take the warm grey two. Um, like we did before, and we're going to use this to help with the blend. Just to help smooth some of this out, some of the blending. But also... Um, to help keep these details out of focus. Okay, um, and then I'm just going to go back in with the one grey five. Uh, no, I'm going to use the one grey four um, over the top here. And I'm just going to use a bit of a harder pressure just to darken here. And then the warm grey five 
uh, cold grey five sorry um these blue tones again and then back over those with the one grey two And we'll just get that really nice blend. Now we've got all the mid-tones in the highlights, so we just need to come in now with the dark shadows. So I'm going to take my dark sepia. Um, and along this dark shadowed line, I'm going to just draw in that dark shape that we can see. It's like a line down here coming up into like a square and then just blend that outwards and then we've got the dark lines here of fur so I'm just going to map in that clump of fur again I'm not focusing too much on details we don't want heavy details um, and then I'm very lightly just jotting in any of these dark lines and shapes that I can see with this sepia. So the dark sepia is going to just add that dark shadow contrast that we need. And you can just see now how that ear, that corner of that ear is just starting to pop. You can also see how much darker this ear was compared to the um, left hand ear that we did previously. Um, and then I'm just going to go back over this with the one grey free. Okay, so we have a little uh, corner here as well, um, so I'm just going to come in again with my one grey one base layer. I've um, got another triangle, so like I say this is all about looking at shapes, look at the shapes that you can see and build up from those shapes. Um, I'm then going to use the uh, Burnt Umber um, for that brown undertone. That we can see and then I'm going to go over the top of that with the one gray four and then the one gray two to help with the blending and then just going to take that dark sepia along here again and I just want to create that definition between these two sections so you can see now I've kind of curled curved the bottom here to show that there's a fold in this ear and then we've got a nice dark straight edge here to indicate the separation between the two parts of the ear okay I've changed the lighting so I'm hoping that the um, shadows won't be as bad now. I think they were just taking over the page a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to take my putty eraser and I'm just going to lighten these graphite lines along the top. Oops, don't mean to move the piece of paper. Hang on. Oh, now I'm changing the lighting again. <laughs> I promise one day I will work out the lighting. <laughs> um, and then one grey one is the base layer. I think that the thing with the lighting, I'm trying to find the best time of day to record um, and I haven't quite worked out when's best. It doesn't help with the UK weather, does it? Some days it's dark, other days it's really light. Um, but I'll work it out, I promise. <laughs> I just hope it isn't too distracting for you all. Um, so this is the one great one as a base layer. And I'm just following the shape of this ear. And just smoothing out the tooth of this paper. Okay. Um, and then I am going to take my copper um okay so i've got the copper um it's hard to explain the color that you get from the copper without seeing it on your pay piece um i just 
I do really like the colours when it's mixed with the greys that the metallics give. Um, so I'm using the copper to help with the tones underneath the greys along this ear. So again, I'm just following the fur direction, kind of mapping in some of the fur. You can see some pencil, uh, some fur strokes and lines in the reference. Again, I'm not copying the picture so that it's a, a complete picture copy. We're using the photo as a reference. We want the fur direction to be going the same way, but we want to create um, our own little guy. Um, I'm then going to take the nugget very lightly. So the reference photo for this piece we're using as a guide for those tonal values and fur direction. Rather than doing an exact photocopy of the piece. Um, okay, and then we're going to take the one grey four, and I'm just going to start darkening up here now. I hope this piece is um, quite enjoyable to follow. I think it's a bit easier than the border collie because it's shorter fur and we don't have an open mouth. Um, I think the ears are probably going to be the most difficult part for some of you. But he's coming together nicely. I'm I'm thinking the next tutorial will be a spaniel. Now I know with a spaniel that it will take a quite a few parts. I think it will be a long one, um, like the um, border collie was. Uh, I've got the one grey free now. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to, what I would like to do is cover quite a few different dog breeds, different fur types, so that you get an idea of all the different kinds of fur that you may approach, um, as well as colours. So we've done a black and white dog, we've, we're doing a grey dog. The Spaniel is a, a, um, a brown uh, liver Spaniel. So... I'm trying to cover different colours, different markings, different fur types. But if there's a particular dog or particular fur type that you struggle with, do let me know um, and I'll see if I can find a reference photo so that we can um, have a go at um, going through a project together. Uh, this is the burnt umber now, just along the bottom here. I want to um, make some of these tutorials as accessible and as easy for you all. This is the burnt umber. Um, and then I've got the one grey five. And I'm just going to go over the top. I think I need to put this in an extender. <laughs> it's getting hard to use. Okay, so the uh, one grey five. And I'm going over the bottom here. So this is just going to give us a nice dark edge along here and just blend down here as well. Um, I'm then going to take the um, I want the cold grey four, I think. Um, it's cold grey three, cold grey four. Um, and I'm just going to bring this nice blue tone along the edge here, blending over this dark patch as well, just to help. Remember, we want that nice blend between the colours, nice smooth blend. And then cold grey here. Um, and then again, I'm just going to use the one grey two to really smooth out this blending. So you can see with this one, I'm not really focusing on using the, the colours themselves to help with the blending. We're using this one grey two to help with the blending. So if, 
if you've ever got a piece where you're struggling to get a blend um see if the one grade two can help you um i do find it's quite good for help with the blending um and then i'm going to come back in with the dark sepia um and just start mapping like this bit here is going to be dark i've got a dark patch here yeah um, and i'm just gonna darken that little bit again and darken along this edge okay so you see we're really starting to get the shape of this ear in now so we'll start with uh, the corner shapes that we can see um, in this side which is still quite grey in colour so we'll um, stick to using our greys for now and then go back into with the pink tones so again I'm just going to lift out that graphite and again I'm just following the shapes I can see so we've got a nice curved line here and then that curves down so we've got all I'm doing is I'm just looking at my reference photo and drawing in that shape that I can see. So I know I go on about it all the time, but it really is about the shapes. Everything's about those shapes. Um, and then I'm going to take the one grey five, uh, which is in my extender. <laughs> and I'm going straight in with a dark little section of fur that we can see here. And along this edge. And then up here. So I'm going to take the warm grey free and I'm just going to blend. So I'm using, I'm sort of imagining that I'm dragging this warm grey free from that warm grey five area and then dragging it down over that warm grey five. Um, and then I'm going to take my cold grey 3, so we're using a lot more greys in this one and I'm just going to go over the top with this cold grey and then again one grey 2 over the top here to help with smoothing the blending. And then back to the one grey 1 for the base layer. And I'm going to bring it across this section of fur. Um, and bring it down. Let me just erase lift some of this graphite. It's just a little bit too dark. Okay, so this is mapped out. We've got the shape of the ear mapped out. So... You've probably noticed that this is what I like to do um, on ears like this and pricked ears if your ears were pointing straight up like a German Shepherd or a Siberian Husky. I like to get the shape of the ear in first. Rather than coming in and working in here, we'll get the shape in first. Um, getting those shapes in first for me helps you, um, one, ensure you've got the shape correct. But then it also means that you're not worried that what you're doing in the middle is going to make this ear too large. You've got the size and the shape correct from the get-go. Um, so I've got the one grey four. And I'm just going to mark in these little clumps of fur that we can see on this section of the ear. Going along this edge, just with this one grey fur. Now we do have a darker patch of fur coming in this ear, uh, which we will get to, and that's the edge here. So that's going to be darker, but we're just mapping these darker shapes for now. Everything's just about slowly mapping it all in. Um, I'm going to take the one grey one, because this has got quite a bluish tone here. So this is going to be a base layer here for this bit of fur that we can see. So I'm just going to come in and along that base there. Um, 
Um, and then I've got the warm grey one and I'm just mapping in this bit for just mapping in little areas like this I find helps me as like reference points. So I'm just mapping in the shapes that I need to use as a reference point. Um, and then I'm going to take the warm grey free along here first. So it's along the bottom and coming up here. So we're kind of using this warm grey free as the highlight point. So the lightest colour on this side of the ear. It's nice when um, an animal has high contrast like this because you can really see the difference from side to side on the ears. Um, I'm then going to take the burnt umber, if I can find it, um, in this corner, along there, and in this little corner here. And just a little bit along here. I'm going to add that little brown hint underneath that fur. I'm then taking my gold um, and again I'm just following that fur direction and we're going to use this gold to mix with the greys and it's just going to help give that under colour that we need um, for this ear. Okay and then the warm grey too. So I know we're using so many colours on this ear but it's just going to help us build up nice contrasts. Okay, I'm then going to take my dark sepia uh, for this dark section of fur. And again, I'm just going to map in. I may need a sharper point for some of these bits of hairs, but dark sepia. Um, I'm then going to get my warm grey six. Uh, one grey five, sorry. Hard pressure. Just going to darken here. And blend that out. And again, just going to darken. So all I'm doing is back and forth. Any areas now where I need to darken. Um, I'm going in with a 1 grey 5 and I'm using the 1 grey 5 to darken up some of these areas and add a little bit of detail. don't want too much but there's a little bit in there. Um, and then I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the 1 grey 1 just ever so gently over the top here. Um, and then again, one grey five. And all I'm doing is I'm just going over any areas that I can see just need to be darker. So, um, and then I'm going to take um, my one grey three. We've got some little hairs coming off of here, so I'm just going to use the warm grey free to do that and then blend that into this area here. Okay. Um, I've then got the dark sepia again and I'm just going to, I've sharpened it. So I've got some nice sharp points and I've just sharpened, uh, sharpened up this dark section of fur, but also getting some of those looser hairs that are going on. And that's just lightly blending to that grey area there. And then lightly over this darker section here. Okay, so we're really starting to get this ear to really come together now. So back to the one grey one. Now we've got a really dark section here, so we're just going to get this in. So um, one grey one for a base layer. like a kite kind of shape here is what I can see um, now I'm going to start off with the walnut brown and I'm going to blend over the top of this dark 
burn umber because we've got burnt umber in here and I'm going to bring this walnut brown down here and I'm just following that along the edge here and along the top of this ear here okay I've then got my red violet and I'm just going to bring that over the top of that walnut brown and into this corner. We're starting to bring in this middle of the ear now. But this is a really dark shadow so we're going to get this in. Because once we've got this dark shadow in we'll know whether we need to darken any of the greys up as well. Um, and then I'm going to take my black um and just along this corner where i can see that it is black along this ear i'm just going to use the black and then i'm going to blend that downwards it's really dark in this little bit of corner and then just blend that over and then i'm going to take that red violet again and I'm just going to use harder pressure now and just really darken this shadow up. Okay, um, and then I'm just going to go back to the warm grey 5 and I'm just going to darken this little bit up. So this is what I mean by like, as you add shadows and you really start adding in those blacks, you notice little areas that you just need to darken up ever so slightly and that's fine go back and forth it's um, helpful for me when I'm working on a piece to go back and forth all the time so now we're coming into the center of this ear and this is where we've got those pink tones so um, as we did before we're going to use the ivory as a base layer and just build up those pinks now again I'm not going to go as bright a pink as they are in the reference photo I want it to be a bit more muted um, but you use whatever colours you can see in your reference photo. Remember, you don't have to have an exact match to what I'm drawing. Um, I just want to guide you through techniques, um, the colours that I see. But if you see different colours, use the colours you see. Um, so I'm going in with the ivory. And I'm just going to apply this as a base layer along the top here. Remembering to remove any graphite lines because the graphite will really stand out in these lighter areas if you've got any. Um, so I'm just going to bring it up to there for now. Okay, let's do this little section first. Um, so then I'm going to take the cinnamon and again I'm using circular motions. Circular motions to um, create the shape of these ears. Keep it nice and smooth. We want nice smooth skin looking in this ear. We don't want it to be um, like fur. Just bring in this light uh, beige red um, over the top. I think this part will be the last part of the tutorial where it'll be loads and loads of colours. Um, we're going into like a lot of the grey fur and the nose. Um, the nose may have a few colours but won't be as extensive as this here, I wouldn't have thought. Okay, so that's the beige red. And I'm just going to apply it all along the bottom here as well. Um, and then got the cold grey one. And I'm using this in this corner where I can see a blue tone. Again, blending over that fur because it's just going to help blend in that fur line. Um, and I'm just going to bring that bit of fur in here. So this is all with a cold grey one. I've then got the cinnamon. And the cinnamon's going to start bringing in some of these shapes and highlights. So I'm just going to... And I'm not pressing hard with the cinnamon at all, very, very lightly, just to 
create some of these shapes and contours within this ear. Um, I'm just going to get my Tombow. I want to um, just erase this line where we've got a shadow going on. Um, and I'm just going to use the cinnamon where that line, graphite line was, and then blend it outwards. Very light pressure. I am not pressing hard on this paper at all. And then I'm going to use cinnamon in here. A bit harder just for it's a bit so it's a bit darker. And then I'm lightening my pressure as it comes outwards into these highlighted areas. Um, and then I'm going back to the red violet. Um, and I'm just going to blend this outwards. And then use the light flesh, uh, the beige red. Uh, it used to be called light flesh, so light flesh or beige red um, over the top just to blend here again. And then very lightly over the ivory. <laughs> okay. Then coming in with the warm grey wool over the top. This is just going to give that greyish pinkish tone that we've got going on in this ear. Um, and along here as well. Again, just following the shape of that ear. Um, and then the light flesh over the top. Along here, so we're getting there. We are slowly getting there. Uh, this is the cinnamon. I just want this area to blend out a bit nicer, so I'm just going to go back and forth till I have the nice smooth blend. Especially as this is a really smooth part of the ear. Don't want some harsh lines. So it's just going to be a bit of back and forth with the red violet and the cinnamon. Well, I'm happier with that blend, which I'm getting there now. I think I'm definitely happier there. Just needed a bit, needed it to be a bit smoother. Okay. Now, in this section of the ear, it's quite dark, so we're actually going to use the warm grey one as the base layer. Um, I'm just going to remove some of these graphite lines very gently with this. Putty eraser. Um, so I'm coming in with the warm grey one now as a base layer. Circular motions again because I want it nice and smooth. Along here. Okay, so that's one section of this ear. Um, and then I am going to use the. Um, I've got the Venetian red. So I'm going to bring this. along here and we're going to curve that down here as well very light pressure this uh, venetian red is quite a pinkish color uh, not too pink it's not it's more on the reddish side but it's a nice light color um, and then i'm going to go over that with the cinnamon Um, and then one grey one is the base layer along here and then we can focus on the shapes a little bit more and blend this nicely together. So um, this is going to be the cinnamon along here. Um, and then I'm just going to go over the top of all of this with the beige red. And then I'm going to 
come in with some of the details so um, I'm going to take the red violet very lightly and I'm just adding in these shadows that I can see along here blend that outwards um, bring that up here and that's going to come down and around here so again it's just about looking at the shapes and the shadows and using your pencils to colour mix and create that colour that you want um, and then got the cinnamon over the top here um, the beige red just to help with the blending so I'm using the beige red at this point to help with the blending and the smoothing out of this ear um, and then I'm just going to take that warm grey one across the top here again just across that bit there um, the Venetian red just going to darken that corner so I'm pressing a bit harder where I want it a bit darker and then that bit there okay um, and then back to the ivory for this base layer here um, and then I'm going to take the Venetian red very light pressure for this shadow that we can see uh, over the top of that with the cinnamon and then I'm going to go over all of this with the beige red Um, I'm just going to take that uh, Venetian red. I'm just going to darken this section here because I'm quite liking the colour this Venetian red's giving. So I'm just going to darken this shadow here, blend that outwards um, using the cold grey one um, along this edge to help with the blending. So you've got a nice blue tone there. Um, and then a bit of a bluish tone here and then back in with this beige red and my cinnamon I'm kind of just going to curve this cinnamon just to create that effect that's going on here and that dark and that little section with the cinnamon as well I'm just going to add in some of these shapes again in the areas that again I just want to build up the colour a bit and don't worry if you're not using the exact colours in the ear I'm wanting to create an ear that I like um, and more so because this is an original we're not doing this for a person it doesn't have to be an exact copy we can make the colours as muted as we want or as bright as we want um, when you're doing a piece for yourself Okay, I'm happy with that ear, so let's do some more of this fur. So, one grey one, and I'm just going to add a base layer. And bring this down here. I've not drawn over that graphite line, I've gone up to the graphite line so that I can re remove that graphite line. Um, I'm going to do the same here, so I'm just going to remove that graphite line there. That one that I need to just lighten. Okay. And then I can just this ear connected to the head and then it'll all make sense <laughs> okay 
Okay, so we've got a bit of a base layer down. So we're going to go back to the um, nougat. Nougat, nougat. I don't know how you say that. I probably mispronounced it the whole way through this tutorial. Uh, there's quite a few different pencils that I'm not quite sure how you actually pronounce them. <laughs> don't make it easy. Um, and I'm just going to bring this across here because we've got a really nice brown tone on this side of his face. Um, I'm going to actually bring this nugget all the way across his head here. So you can see uh, what I'm doing is I'm stopping and I'm constantly looking at the reference photo to uh, make sure that these pencil strokes are following the direction of the fur on his head. I know I say it, I say it in every tutorial video that you've watched, but I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> okay, so we've got the nougat. Where it's a bit darker here, I've got the burnt umber. I'm very lightly going to use this burnt umber. Well, we're going to have some shadows along here. Again, following that fur direction. So you, you want to be looking at your reference photo more than you are your drawing. Constantly looking down or across at your reference photo. Now I've got the warm grey 5 and I'm just going to take the warm grey 5 across all of this. Now, as I start adding in these details on this side of his head, I can see that we need to start adding more detail around his eye. Um, but we can come back and do that. We may do that in the next part. I just want this part to mainly be like the ear and getting this fur in around his ear. Uh, just like the last part, part two. Part three will definitely be more on the fur and bringing it all together. I'm thinking as well for one of my tutorials I'd quite like to do an all white dog. Um, I really enjoy drawing white dogs. So we may do a an all white dog for a tutorial. And I'm just gonna bring I'm also thinking um, for one of my tutorials we're going to use just the black pencil um, and I'll show you that you don't need loads and loads of colours because I know I, I add a lot of colours into my work, um, that is something about my work that I do a lot um, but I'm going to show you that like using just one colour we can still produce something realistic. So I have lots of ideas. <laughs> Lots planned. <laughs> um, we're then going to use the cold grey five. Um, that's not cold grey five. Cold grey five. Um, over the top, and this is just going to start adding some extra details. So it's a nice sharp pencil, where I can just see some of these bluer tones. You can see we've really started getting some nice fur definition. Along here, a cold grey five here. Okay, and then I'm going to use the warm grey two um, over the top of all of this.
We've had lots of people following the Border Collie tutorial and there's been some amazing drawings from that. So I do hope that these tutorials are really helpful for you all. The standard that you guys have been producing with the Border Collie has been amazing. Okay, right, now we need to start getting a bit more detail coming in. So um, I'm going to take the Walnut Brown and we're just going to really start making this ear look connected to the head. So that's the Walnut Brown um, and then the one Grey 5. And then over the top of the one with grey two. Um, and then I'm going to use the cold grey five for this part of his ear. And again, I'm starting to now just add some of these wispy hairs that are coming over the top of this ear. So that it looks like that ear is in place. Okay. Um, go back to the dark sepia. So this bit is quite a dark patch of fur. So I'm just going to use that dark sepia. Just create some wispy hairs going over that ear. And then that's blending downwards. And just dark in here. And then he's got a dark, this dark patch of fur along the side of his head here. that's coming down his ear. This is with the dark sepia. I'm not pressing too hard but hard enough so it's darker. Um, and then the one grey two. Along here. Uh, back to the one grey five. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring this one grey five into this eye here. So you can see now that we're just starting to really blend these two sections together nicely. We want a nice blend. Just give me that pigment a little bit. Um, I've got the one grey four. And I'm just going to bring the one grey four along here just to help blend this eye and I'm going over that darker section here okay um, I'm going to take the copper over that bit here Like so. I'm going to take the warm grey free along the top of this head here now. So you can see the amount of layers that I'm adding is why I use the watercolour paper because I can keep, as long as you use light, light pressure, you can keep adding um, and building up your layers, which adds that depth to your fur. Um, and then I've got the warm grey two over the top. Okay. Right, and then I'm just going to take my warm grey five. I'm going to really sharpen this um, and we're going to just tidy up this bit of the head. And then this part of the tutorial will be done. So I'm going to use very light pressure with this warm grey 5, but I'm going to come in now over the top of all this. Very small pencil strokes. And I'm just really going to start defining some of this fur. Now if you find you can't get any more layers on your paper, don't worry. Just do what you can. Um, if you're struggling to get layers, pick up your black 
and use very very light pressure with a very sharp black pencil but it will help you get some of these little details but these are just little extras that I'm doing now with the detailing of the fur. This isn't completely necessary. It's just going to add that little bit extra detail uh, that I have within my own work. Um, and then I'm going to take the one grey four and just do the same up here where it's just a little bit lighter. And then again, I'm taking this one grey two. But I'm not pressing too hard, I'm just, I'm using it to help with the blending, but I'm following that fur direction again. Okay, and there we have two ears on this little Italian greyhound. And you can really see now the difference between the two. We can see how this side of his face is going to be a lot lighter compared to this side. So we do need to darken this eye up a little bit, the, the fur around the eye. Um, but the next part is going to be about working on the fur on his face. We're going to bring his face together. Um, we're going to see how much we can get done. I'm going to try and get his face done next time. It's not the biggest face. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. We'll just see how much we can get done within an hour next time. Um, this tutorial has been a bit under an hour, so um, we'll see. We never know, because he's not the biggest portrait. This is done on A4, so he's not the biggest portrait, which means we're going to get him done quicker than the Border Collie. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below, um, or any suggestions on dogs you'd like to see in the future, um, or any of animals. Um, I do mainly draw dogs, but if you want me to do a tutorial on a different animal, let me know and um, I will see you in the next part. Bye everybody.